So uh, is Jody Rich here? Jody, yeah, Jody, you're right there. So Jody Rich, CEO of uh, People Browser, uh, trading token presentation. Uh, you're gonna, you, uh, they're gonna queue up your presentation over there. Uh, and uh, do you want to use the uh, roaming microphone or do you want to use the uh, the podium? What do you prefer to use? This one works. Okay. Here you go. Hi everyone. Um, small group, so we're actually gonna have some fun. Um, which means I'm going to get you all to participate in my presentation. Uh, I have a pocket full of euro currency, and I'm going to be asking you questions. So my first question, can you close the door at the back for me? Thanks. My first question is, what happened this week 49 years ago? And here's 10 euros to the person who can answer. This week, 49 years ago, no Googling. Are you Googling over there? He's not even listening. Okay, well, if you Google, you get the 10. In fact, I'll, I'll give you 20. In the next five seconds, if you can tell me what happened 49 years ago, maybe our journalists can tell us. Come on, guys. So, I was nine years old on the 20th of July, 1969, and I watched the first man land on the moon. And it was not the man landing on the moon that gave me goosebumps. It was the feeling around me that every human that I spoke to on that day actually wanted that man to succeed. And what I have spent my life thinking about is how do we build collaboration tools that make humans more generous? And so what I'm gonna be talking to you about now is crypto cred. CryptoCred is a platform that creates human engagement. We have, and that's me, if we can go to the next one, Johan, can we go to the next turn? Um, our core technology at People Browser has been a very deep social network platform that creates social networks for big governments and institutions. And about four years ago, we started working with Ripple, Stellar, and Ethereum and we have now built currency into our social network. Uh, Johan, can you go to the next tab for me? Um, and I'm gonna tell you how it works in a moment, but this is my little coin collection. There's a face of me on that one. There's me being a Starship commander going to the stars in the next. Warren Whitlock over there. I have created personal coins that as I give those coins away to people, we actually create network. And our platform allows any brand or any person to create their own network out of their coin on their own domain. Johan, can we have the next slide, thanks? The next, um, thing. so um, this is live. For any of you who want to go to crypto.cred, you can sign up to be one of the first early adopters. Um, it's an ERC-20 currency and an ERC-721 collectible, so it's both a fungible and non-fungible product. And anyone can add their own video assets to their coin, and as they give the coin away, that coin gathers connections and conversations. And that's really cool. It means that the coin actually is the kernel of the network. Because the problem we've been trying to solve is if you want to create, if we want to create your own network on your own domain, how do you do it? And you can do it now with an ERC721 protocol on the Stellar network. Now, for some more flash cash, um, who can tell me why we would put an ERC721 protocol on the Stellar network instead of the Ethereum network? It's a difficult question. Michael, do you know? What happened when CryptoKitties went live in November? What's that, Jonathan? Much faster. Okay, everyone, give him a, a give, clap, 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 please. Here you go. No, here you go. $10, 10 euros. He told him the answer. Okay, well, I have to give you 10 too, right? Here you go. There's 10 for you. I have lots more of those. Um, so what's really interesting is that if you're an app developer building consumer products right now and you put on Ethereum, your users are gonna have to pay lots of gas and um, it's gonna be slow. So we've put ERC20 and ERC721 protocols on the Stellar network. 
Uh, and one of the interesting things we've done with this now is we've rolled out to a small group of brands and CryptoKitty users. Um, if you, Johan, if you could go to the next one, please. Um, do who, anyone here have a CryptoKitty? Uh, anyone? Michael, you don't own any CryptoKitties? He has Kitty Cash. Okay, well, I'm sad. I was hoping at least someone here would be a CryptoKitty owner. Or uh, well, you're not admitting it. Hmm. So if you've just paid $1,000 in Ethereum for a little kitty cat, you can't tell your friends that you have it, can you? Well, you sort of can. But what we've done is we've integrated with CryptoKitties and we've allowed you to coinify your cat. Uh, Johan, can you scroll down a little bit for me? Um, you can turn your crypto kitty into a coin. A little bit more. There. So it's one of the little kitties that I own. And now guess what you can do? You can make a hundred of those and send it to your friends. So now you can actually get some value. And as if every one of your friends thinks that that cat is cute, they can comment it. And you can be connected. And, if, and someone earlier was saying, you know, how do I meet people with blockchain? Well, if you're in the bar and you meet someone and you're talking about what you're doing, you can actually say, well, I'll give you my kitty coin. How cool is that? Um, Johan, if you could go to the next one, please. Um, so if you go to crypto cred forward slash brands, um, you can see all the different uses that brands are using now um, crypto cred for. Uh, we've found that... Um, Artists in New York decided that they wanted to actually coinify their street art and they have added their street art to coins and as those coins are being sold, a royalty is going back to the artists. And the last thing that we've done um, is we have created special coins for market makers so that you can actually create your own marketplace now. And if you want to, uh, if you have a community, if you have a list, if you're a journalist, and you have followers, you can create your own coins and sell them in your own marketplace. And you can also buy the raw currency and you can sell that to your community as well. Thank you very much, everyone. You've been a great audience. I actually do have more cash in my pocket, but you'll have to talk to me at the dinner tonight to get it. Thank you. All right, great. Any questions? Questions for him? Yep. Bring the microphone over. Let me just squeeze by you here. The royalty for creators, artists, how much is it? Uh, it's up to the artist to decide. We put a limit of a cap of 10% because we don't want it to become a multi-level marketing program for them. Um, but the idea is that if you've created some art and you put on a coin and I buy it and then this gentleman, what's your name? Bob. Bob buys it. Um, then when Bob buys it from me, you, the artist, makes money again on that coin as a royalty. Okay, so as an artist, I pocket 10% <coughs> and, and you take 90%. No. No, who? No, the person who's selling it sells it for whatever right. and the buyer pays a premium of 10%. The royalty is disclosed as another line item on the transaction. Thank you. Pleasure. All right, great. Anybody else? Thank you very yep, much. Another question in the back here. Oh. Hi. Sean Barger, Equilibrium. I'm just curious, why would anybody want to trade a coin with art on it? Is it, is it really an act, is it like a, a fun activity or is there an actual utilitarian use of this coin as well? Um, the, so that the question is, why would anyone want to trade a coin with art on it? It's the same reason that someone wants to buy any digital asset. You know, baseball cards. Why? Why? People like to collect things. Um, uh, art's one example. Other things that people put on as achievements and awards. Um, we have one user who's creating awards for Navy SEALs. Right now, if you're a Navy SEAL and you do certain things, you get a physical badge. Um, but lots of people want to put that badge on their profile. Jonathan, did you want to add to that? Yeah, 
Right, that's on the game though, so it's something you can actually use as well. There's an actual functional use of it. Do you have any market sizing data on this? How wide is it going to grow and what's the potential? No, brand new. Um, what's interesting is that there are now collectible exchanges. If you go to Rarebits, R-A-R-E-B-I-T-S, or OpenSea, you'll see that there are collectible exchanges springing up. Our view is that um, this is actually a much more useful um, way for consumers to get involved in blockchain because I can create my own collectible asset now. Was there one other question? Mark? Here you go. Crypto collectibles are worth around 50 million uh, euros, dollars, with the potential to grow to billions. Um, and it's nostalgia that's one of the main drivers, you know, like... And, 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 and let me give you another example. Um, we've been in social media for 10 years, and uh, one of the main reasons why people go on Facebook or LinkedIn is because they want likes. You know, you wake up in the morning, you've got 10 likes. My 87-year-old mum, she wakes up in the morning, she goes to Instagram and she says, hey, darling, I got another 100 likes for that photo. Creating your own digital asset and being able to give it to people or have people request it, it's like creating your own like. Whether we think it has value or not, it gives us a good feeling. All right, and on that good feeling note, we're going to have to end it. Thank you, Jody. Good job.